I know your perception of New Zealand at that time because I've heard the story before uh, <laughs> and it was based off a movie. Tell us about that. Okay, yeah. So it, it was in uh, this was in uh, the season of 99 and uh, Once Were Warriors had just actually been released. I think it was 98 that it came out. So I've, I'd watched the movie and then when they said, oh, you go over and sign with the Warriors, I'm like, oh, okay, yeah, Once Were Warriors. So me, it was the story goes, me, David Miles and Scotty Cox, and we all uh, flew over on the same flight. We were all coming together, one from um, North Queensland, I think, and the other one was from uh, Newcastle. And uh, we all kind of met at the airport and we flew over. Um, we stayed in a hotel in Mangani and uh, out near the airport somewhere there. And uh, we flew over on a Monday um, and Tuesday was Melbourne Cup Day. So we um, we all went, went, oh, we'll go down the local pub where the TAB is, put our bets on for Melbourne yeah. Cup, you know, have a few beers and then we'll head home, watch the Melbourne Cup. We gets down there and the first thing I saw when we walked in was a crate of beer sitting up on the on the counter, like once for Warriors and we're like, Let's get out of here, man. We were scared. So we uh, put our bets on and bowled it back to the hotel. And uh, and we're like, oh, my God. My first impressions of New Zealand was like, oh, it's got to be like uh, once we're Warriors, but it obviously is not. Uh, what was it like, that winning feeling uh, when you're playing for the Warriors? And, and how did you enjoy that? You know, the songs that played as, at the end, Loyal and, and everything else? Yeah, mate, it was, it's real strange. When I got over there in, at the end of 99, 2000, it was still Tainui owned. It was still Auckland Warriors, not New Zealand Warriors and things like that. So, and Mark Graham was the coach. So it was, uh, and, it was, and it was tough times. Like we didn't win too many. Uh, I still um, re remember that the referees, I thought, we used to give us a, rub, a bad rub of the green. And, that's, and I thought it was all talk until I actually was a part of it. And uh, and uh, and we were getting we we're getting some dodgy calls. So um, and then um, to move into the, the um, 2000 2001 with the Auckland Warriors, Daniel Anderson and all that. Um, yeah, like, the, like you said, the winning and uh, singing the song and 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 just um, embracing the fans and the fans were just getting excited and you were just so pumped to go and play, especially at Mount Smart. It was uh, it was an amazing venue. And I think we spoke about it last week with Owen Goodenbill. Uh, the sandpit on a Monday morning, 8 a.m. with Ando, when he was uh, a little bit annoyed with our performance on the Sunday. Your, your memories of that? Oh, a, a very um, a bad. <laughs> uh, yeah, that was our punishment. And uh, you knew you were in trouble when they mentioned the word sandpit. And um, it, was, uh, it was tough. You're making massive collisions and things like that. But it was dirty. You'd have sand everywhere. Uh, my one of my memories from the sandpit was uh, Frank Paul Nuasala was a young kid, uh, eighteen year old, absolutely bloody bulletproof. Him and also the late Sunny Fi, um, those guys coming in as eighteen year olds and just ripping and tearing through us forwards, and we we're all kind of you know hundred game uh, NRLers going, mate, settle down, and they were just ripping shreds off us. So uh, yeah, the the sandpit is brings back a few nightmares, actually. Mm. What about with Mark Graham? And, um, like, there was that morning we got in there, there was not many balls around. There was no balls around. There was plenty of boxing gloves. Uh, and uh, oh. as Arwen does, he goes up to the coach and says, what are we trying to learn from this uh, session? What's the, the outcomes you want to achieve? He goes, nothing. You, what do you remember of that? Because I remember a couple of good dust-ups that you had. Yeah, well, there was actually uh, there was a guy that I don't know if many of the supporters knew. He didn't. I don't think he pl went on and played first grade. Vai Kalolo, um, he was a local um, like a, a Bataka type player uh, for many years. And uh, I was I, I faced this guy, and I'd only kind of just met everyone. I'd only been there a couple of months, kind of in the off season, and he just punched holes through me. And then I uh, then Henry Farfilly came. He had a chop at me as well, and I'm like, "What the? What's going on here?" No, he was good until he got tired, uh, right? He was good until he got tired. He had like all the moves, wingers, mate. Yeah, come he out. had all the moves, and then he got tired, and then you fixed them up, which was hard to watch. Yeah, well, I'd had enough. I've been punched bloody holes through with my vi, and then Henry Farfilly come out like a bloody wrecking ball, and then I. So once he he settled down a little bit, then yeah, I come into my own and I got a little bit of payback on a winger. But um, mm. yeah, those days with Mark Graham, we used to bloody do 400s and things like that. And Mark Graham be on the sideline with the smoking and out of his mouth laughing and had us all um, struggling. So mate, yeah, those were those were the days, you know, you, um, you did the consequences, you worked hard. And I was always at the back chasing all you fit buggers, but um, <laughs> uh, we got it done.